Hey there, everyone. Okay, so this next topic today, it's kind of got two topics. It's more of one than the other. Uh, it's called correlation and data mining, an introduction to correlation and a little tiny bit of data mining. Um, they're both important topics in this day and age. Data mining, you may have heard of data mining, D-A-T-A, -A, data mining. Uh, it's becoming more popular just because computing technology is getting to the point where we can run these massive searches and look through data and look for what things are related to each other more than we could even 10 years ago. But before we can do that, we have to look at what correlation means. And I think the best way to do that is actually look at some data that applies to us um, in our daily lives. So to, to, get, some, to get this data in front of us, uh, go to the, the, the uh, Math 105 page, like we, we go to usually, but instead of being from this page, and instead of going to the schedule page, I want you to go to the resources page. I don't think we've gone here very often if at all, maybe on the first day when you were clicking through the syllabus. And what you have here is you have a list of all the topics that we're going to do um, in Math 105. And we've gone through the fundamental accounting principle, grade and linear modeling, and now we're moving into correlation and data mining. And the reason we're going to do this now is because it's a nice follow-up from these past two. Uh, it's a nice, a nice way to pause before we get to the next one, which is exponential modeling. Okay, so what I want you to do is... Uh, in this topic, I want you to wander over here and grab what's called the Breaking Distances Spreadsheet. Okay, it's going to pop open as an Excel file. Here she is right here. Now, what you've got here is you've got a page from the old Oregon Driver's Manual. Now, this is old like when I... Uh, first moved out to Oregon and got my driver's license. And the reason I'm using the old driver's manual is because the new one doesn't have this data list in it. It's just got a very clever picture, which I'll pull up later and we'll take a look at. But it doesn't have this cool data table. And I like data. I like raw data and working with raw data. Okay, so what you have here, let's take a look at what you've got. It's got a little introduction here talking about the braking ability of vehicles. Um, and it talks about Passenger cars, standard passenger cars. And you've got lots of little footnotes down here I'll, ha I'll have you read um, later on when we get to it. But this table lists speeds that standard passenger cars can go. So you got 20, 30, 40, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, and 80 miles an hour. And 80 might seem really fast, but this is totally the speed limit. If you drive east out of Oregon and Idaho, there are sections of, um, I think it's I-84, maybe I-15, I forget exactly which one it is, where 80 is the speed limit. So it's it, it's it's legit. Uh, the next column over from that is feet per second. All they've done is they've, uh, they've transferred miles per hour into feet per second, which you could easily do if you wanted to. Um, it's just a dimensional analysis problem. After that is perception reaction distance. Don't worry about what that is right now. We'll come back to that, I promise. Next to that is braking distance. And again, don't worry about that. We'll come back to that as well. And then stopping distance. And then last but not least, kind of in its own over here, is stopping distance on ice. Uh, and these are all in feet. These, these puppy dogs are all in feet right here. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to take a few moments right now because the problem with this this image, it's great, it's data, and that's wonderful. The problem with it is, is we, we can't really do a lot with this unless we get it into the spreadsheet. So we're gonna take a little bit of time right now. I'm gonna pause the video in a second. And I want you to take these perception reaction distances that are right here in feet and put those into your Excel spreadsheet here. So for example, at 20 miles an hour, you're gonna put 44 for feet in next to 20, then you're gonna put 66, then you're gonna put 88 and so forth and so on until you've got them all filled in all the way down. You're gonna skip the braking distance one. And then you're gonna put the stopping distance on dry pavement, which is this one right here. Put all those numbers here. And then the stopping distance on icy pavement right here. So take a few moments right now, I'm gonna hit pause and fill it in too, and you fill those numbers in, then we'll regroup. <laughs> Okay, my friends. So I've uh, I've, in, I've inserted all these numbers from the chart over here. Oh, you know what I'm going to do too? I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab, I'm going to get that. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Yeah, now I've got the word dry next to payment and icy next to payment. That's kind of nice. I can see it that way. Okay, so let's just let's just look at, at what these things are and chat about them before we 
actually analyze anything. So perception distance, let's talk about that. They noticed they also called it reaction distance, perception, reaction. Matter of fact, I can put that right here, perception, reaction distance there. I'm gonna this over. There we go. That's not bad. All right. So what that means is, and you probably already figured this out, it, when you're driving along at a certain speed and then something happens in front of you that makes you realize you need to stop. This is how many feet it takes you to make that realization. So it's the amount of time it takes from the moment your eye first sees whatever it sees, whether it's a ball rolling in front of a car, whether it's a deer, whether it's another car, whatever it is. From the moment your eye first sees it to the moment your foot goes to the brake pedal. This is how many feet. If you're going 20, it takes 44 feet. We're gonna talk about where this number comes from in a later video, but that's what this table is telling us. If you're going 30, it takes 66 feet. If you're going 40, it takes 88 feet. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're going 80, it takes 176 feet. So that's the reaction distance. Very often we talk about reaction time, and we'll talk about that as well later. There's a, there's a mathematical thing going on here we'll chat about. So reaction distance. So if you're going 60 miles an hour, it takes 131 feet to realize that you need to stop. Okay, let's look at the stopping distance on dry pavement for 20 miles an hour, 64 feet. Now you may have noticed this, you may have already figured this out actually, that 64 is gotten by adding the reaction distance to what's called the braking distance. So I didn't have you input the braking distance into the spreadsheet because you really don't have to, you've got it in the stopping distance. So the braking distance, I mentioned before that the reaction distance is the distance it takes from the moment your eye realizes you need to stop to the moment your foot hits the brake pedal. Braking distance is the distance it takes from the moment your foot's on the brake pedal to the moment your car comes to a complete stop. And the stopping distance is the sum of both of those two things. So this is the braking distance, just FYI, that's on dry pavement. If it takes 44 feet to realize you have to stop and 20 additional feet to actually hit the brakes and come to a stop, it takes 64 total feet to stop from beginning to end, from perception to when the car is not moving. And all of these numbers all the way down are found by adding the previous two together. So that's what this is. So when you're going 80, I mean, this, this number is kind of, uh, if you think about 504 feet, that's way over the length of a, fo a football field to stop safely at 80 miles an hour. I mean, when, when they say stop safely, they mean not losing control of the car, not just slamming on the brakes and sliding and anything like that, but to, to come from, to go from 80 to zero, stop in a controlled, safe manner. It takes 504 feet to stop. And it gets that much crazier with, uh, with icy pavement over here. I mean, look at that, 1,247 feet to stop going 80 on ice. I want everybody to promise me right now, even though I can't hear you, that you're never going to travel 80 miles an hour on icy pavement. I mean, I can't even, I don't even want to think about that. So we're not thinking about that. Okay, so we've got our scatter plot, or excuse me, we've got our data table filled in. In the next video, we're going to create scatter plots of all these things and chat about what those are.